don't end war war will end us true words by hg wells hi everyone i'm adina isnar from the economics department of kg college pambadi and i'm here to have a talk on the topic russia ukraine conflict before getting to know about the russia ukraine conflict we need to know about the reasons behind this conflict starting with the cold war the cold war was a period of geopolitical tension between the soviet union on one side and the america on the other side and their allies respectively it was started in 1947 and was ended in 1989 the three main changes that happened in the geopolitics after the cold war are following the first one the end of the communism in the eastern europe in 1989 second one the reunification of germany in 1990 The third and the most important result of the Cold War in the geopolitics is the end of the Soviet Union in 1991. The Soviet Union, which disintegrated in 1991, was made up of 15 republics. The 15 republics are following: Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarus, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Russia, Moldova, Ukraine, and uh, Georgia, Kazakhstan. Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan and Turkmenistan. Russia, the largest country in the world. It spans over the northern Asia as well as the east Europe. Moscow is the capital city as well as the largest city in Russia. The current president of Russia is Vladimir Putin. Next about Ukraine. Ukraine is the second largest country in Europe after Russia. Kyiv is the capital city and the current president is Volodymyr Zelensky. Ukraine got its independence on 24th August 1991. Since 1991, there were about 6 presidents in Ukraine and one acting president. When we are talking about the Russia-Ukraine conflict, we need to know about the political parties in the Ukraine. Mainly, the political parties in Ukraine can be classified under three heads. The first one is the pro-Western that is they are the supporters of nato supporters of uh, european union and they are anti russian the second set of party that is the pro russian that is they are the supporters of russia and they are euro skeptic that is they are against nato and european union and the third one is the party of regionalism that is they are formed for local interest and are formed within 5 to 10 years next about the fourth president of ukraine that is viktor yanukovych He was in power from 2010 to 2014. He belongs to the Communist Party of Soviet Union that merged with the opposition platform for life in 2014. This party was mainly a pro-Russian or they are the supporters of Russia and they are against NATO as well as against the European Union. He is the image some blunders. All the poll uh, one of his policies was considered as a blunder uh, by the Ukrainian people. that is the kharkiv pact or the kharkiv agreement it was signed in april 2010 it was signed between the ukrainian president viktor yanukovych and the russian president dmitry mendeleev the russian prime minister at that time was vladimir putin uh, then what is this kharkiv pact all about According to this Kharkiv agreement, Russia agrees to have 30 percent price cut on natural gas for Ukraine. In return, Russia wanted the lease on the natural uh, natural uh, naval facilities in Black Sea at Sevastopol to be extended for 25 years. That is, till 2042, Russia will have control of the Black Sea at Sevastopol. As I had already told, Russia and Ukraine both these were part of the Soviet Union that was disintegrated in 1991. During its disintegration, there arises mainly four problems between this Russia and Ukraine. These four problems are on the division of the Crimean Peninsula, on the division of the energy resolution and other debts, on the division of the Black Sea at Sevastopol, and the last one is the division of the nuclear weapon system. Have you heard about the Chernobyl disaster? Some of us might have heard the Chernobyl disaster that was happened on 26 April 1986 happened at number no. four reactor at the Chernobyl in the near the city of Pripyat in Ukraine. It was the largest nuclear disaster that the world has ever seen. 
Coming back to the presidential years of Viktor Yanukovych, in 2010 October, he amended the uh, Ukrainian constitution that states about the president's removal. During the years of 2011 to 12, Viktor Yanukovych faced uh, some uh, corruption charges. He introduced uh, some damage control, that is, the policies which are introduced by Viktor Yanukovych to regain his old popularity that was lost during the year of 2011 to 12 was called uh, damage control measures. One of the most important measure put forward by Viktor Yanukovych was the signing of European Union Association Agreement in 2013. but on 21st november 2013 he and his government went back and suspended the signing of the european union association agreement this marked the end uh, sorry this marked the beginning of the euro maidan moment and this also marked the beginning of the downfall of the president viktor yanukovych from power what is this euro maidan moment all about The Euro Maidan movement was a protest or revolution that happened in Ukraine for the removal of the president Viktor Yanukovych from power. It was started in 2013 and it lasted up to 2014. And uh, it it was called the Euro Maidan because it happened in the Europe and Maidan refers to the, it have uh, it happened in the Maidan of Kyiv that is the capital city of Ukraine. On 16th January 2014, the Viktor Yanukovych and his government passed the anti-protest laws. And on 21st January 2014, he signed the Agreement on Settlement of Political Issues in Ukraine under the mediation of Russian Federation as well as European Union. And on 21st February, 22nd February 2014, Viktor Yanukovych and his government fled to some of his government officials fled to Russia. A recent report says that Russia is planning to bring him pa- back to power in Ukraine. That is, Russia wanted a puppet in Ukraine. The protest, that is, the Euro Maidan protest, was mainly organized in the eastern parts of Ukraine. That is, the Luhansk and the Donbas region. These regions were commonly known as the Donbas region and on the Crimean Peninsula. Let's now talk about the fifth president of Ukraine, that is Petro Poroshenko. He was in power from 2014 to 2019. He was elected to power on 7th June 2014, and he belongs to the so, uh, European Solidarity Party, that was mainly a pro-Western, or they were the supporters of NATO, supporters of European Union, and were against Russia or the anti-Russian party. The year of 2014 was a landmark year for uh, Ukraine. mainly because of three reasons the first one is that ukraine lost crimea that is the crimean peninsula was ex- extended by russia the crimean peninsula as well as the donbas region was captured by the russian military forces second new president petro poroshenko was elected to power and the third one is the end of the euro maidan moment on july 2014 Malaysian made M17 was shot and uh, shot in the uh, over the Donbas region by BUK M1 surface to surface missile that is a Russian made missile this uh, marked the influence of Russia in the conflict region that is the Donbas region as well as the Crimean peninsula then the, uh, there came the Minsk agreement The Minsk Agreement was signed on 5th September 2014. It was a peace proposal put forward by Germany, France, Russia, and Ukraine. It mainly focused, or its main aim was to cease fire of these conflict regions. The Minsk refers to the capital city of Belarus, and France and Germany represented the Organization for Security and Cooperation Cooperation in Europe. But this agreement was an utter failure. Then there came the Minsk II Agreement. It was signed on 12th February 2015. Uh, when we look into the Minsk Agreement from Ukraine's perspective, Ukraine wanted the ceasefire in the uh, complete ceasefire, complete autonomy of the conflict region, and the full Ukrainian govern- government control of this conflict region. And what was Russia's demand? Russia wanted autonomy of these Donbas region as well as the Crimean peninsula. It was in this scenario that the new president that is the current president Volodymyr Zelensky was elected to power in Ukraine. 
He was elected to power in 2009, April 21st, 2019. Uh, he belonged to the Servants of the People's Party. That was mainly a pro, uh, pro Western. That is, they were the supporters of NATO, supporters of European Union, and anti Russian party. On 1st October 2019, President uh, Volodymyr Zelensky agreed to implement the Stainia formula. What is the Stainia formula all about? The Stainia formula was an alternative to the Minsk agreement and it was a peace proposal put forward by the former German President Frank Walter Stainia. According to the Stainia formula, Ukraine has to grant self-governing uh, uh, status to the conflict region or the Donbass region only after conducting elections. So both Ukraine as well as Russia has demands. From uh, what was Ukraine's demand? Let's now look into it. Ukraine wanted the complete withdrawal of the Russian forces in this Donbass region as well as the Crimean Peninsula or the conflict regions. What did Russia tell? Russia said elections first and then autonomy and then everything else. But. Uh, this uh, agreement was, to uh, some extent, it was also a failure. If this agreement had to win, then one has to bend. Either Ukraine or Russia has to bend. Ukraine knows that if it will, if it bends and uh, agreed to provide, uh, agreed to conduct elections in these regions, then Ukraine will not ever be able to control these Donbass regions. Because in 2014 or from 2014 onwards, Russia had control of these regions and only the Russian candidates will win in these regions and no other Ukrainian candidate is going to win there. And Russia will have uh, control, full control of these regions. And Russia also knows that if it to try, uh, if it move back from this um, agreement, uh, move back at this time, then Russia won't be able to have control of these regions, and Ukraine won't be able to. Uh, Ukraine won't conduct elections to this conflict region ever, and it will only extend its power without conducting elections, and it will sign the NATO partnership, etc. And Russia don't like this, so no one is try, uh, trying to bend. If it, this war has to end, one has to bend, but we don't know who will bend. So let's now talk about the US-Ukraine relationship. As I had to already told in 1991, uh, when the Soviet Union disintegrated, in the same year, Ukraine got independence. And in that year itself, America recognized Ukraine as an independent country. In 1994, it signed the trilateral trilateral statement regarding the elimination of nuclear weapons in Ukraine. In the same year, it also signed the Non-Proliferation Treaty, that is the NPT with America. In 1997, NATO and the Ukraine partnership was established. In 2003, Ukraine agrees to deploy about 1,800 troops for, uh, to help America in the Iran invasion. And in 2015, Biden made a corruption-free message or a speech at the capital city of Ukraine at Kiev. Recently in news, we have been hearing the word NATO. What is this NATO? The NATO or the North Atlantic Treaty Organization was a military alliance that was formed on 4th April 1949 under the leadership of America. It consists of about 28 European countries and two North American countries. The two North American countries and Mont Montenegro and North Macedonia. Next about the European Union. The European Union was a political and economic union of about 27 members that are primarily lo located in the euro. The motto of European Union is united in diversity and its headquarters is at Brussels, Belgium. Let's now talk about the ongoing war of Russia and Ukraine. It is an uh, Russia-Ukraine ongoing war was started on was started as a full war on 24th February 2022, and uh, but to some extent it was started in 2014 itself. That is, in 2014, the Russia invaded Crimean Peninsula and it has captured the Crimean Peninsula as well as the uh, Donbas, Luhansk, and the 
Donbas. That is the Donbas region. From till uh, 2004, uh, since 2014, the Shah had full control of these regions. And on 20th, it was on 22nd, uh, 24th February 2022 that Russia had uh, Russia moved on an ongoing war with the Ukraine. India always stands on a peaceful mind. That is, India always pleading for, for, uh, with the both Russia and Ukraine to stop this war, to uh, operate that ceasefire, to stop this war. India is always with the peace. It can be said, uh, this ongoing war can be said as the largest military attack in Europe since the World War II. Let's hope for a better future and let's pray that this ongoing Russia-Ukraine war will end soon without making further destruction. Thank you.